looking at uh, at a GoPur is is exciting. But what gets uh, me and and I believe the the team uh, excited the most is when we look at the exploration opportunities that remain to be tested. Well, hello there, my friends. Chris Mark is here with you for Arcadia Economics. And today, a video I'm excited to share because as I've mentioned before, earlier this month, I got to take an actual site visit of Fortuna Seguela Mine in Cote d'Ivoire in West Africa, where it was great to see everything that they've built in the last year and a half. And today we're gonna to show you a little bit more about it. We're in Abidjan, getting on the choppers, ready to head over to the Seguela gold mine site. We are on site here at Seguela, Fortuna's new gold mine. We are standing looking at the antenna deposit. The antenna deposit had a mineral inventory of around 400,000 ounces when the acquisition of Fortuna Silver took place. Currently, we have a mineral inventory far in excess of that. This is first stage of all of the ore going to the ROM pad. The other pits are being staged, the next pit starting later in the year called Ancien and we are, will be giving supplementary feed to the ROM pad from both Ancien and from uh, the antenna pits. We're now getting down to the harder material, we're now increasing the rate at which we're drilling and blasting. Over there on that hill you'll see some workings, that's the cooler deposit. Over there on the other side of that conveyor belt, that is the crusher, which is breaking the rocks up and then setting them on the conveyor belt. You see here some decent sized chunk rocks. Now you are looking at one of the next steps in terms of further refining and breaking down the ore. This is the SAG mill here, which was quite massive and it really gives you an idea of the size of the infrastructure and all the energy that's needed to further refine the ore before you can start processing the gold out. Commence grade control drilling in January, um, drilling on a roughly 10 by 10 meter basis. We covered from the 405 RL at the southern end down to 380 RL to give us eight 5 meter mining benches of information. We are filming today live from Fortuna's Seguela mine site. It's been quite an honor. We took a tour of operations and fortunately I'm joined by Jorge Ganoza, the CEO of Fortuna Silver, who uh, we'll get his word in a minute because quite an impressive operation that they have built here in a very short period of time. Also joined by David Whittle, the chief operating officer in the West African operations and Jorge, especially now that you've had the first gold pour and now having a bunch of analysts and media in to see the site, a lot that you've completed in a short period of time, just over two years since the deal with Rocks Gold. And curious to hear any thoughts now that you've got things up and running and have a lot going on here. Yeah, no, first, uh, the team, uh, uh, the West Africa team here has had an excellent delivery. Uh, like you said, no, the, we are celebrating our two-year anniversary of the Roxwell transaction, uh, business combinations, been lots of work, uh, lots of uh, effort deployed. And, uh, you know, May 24th was our first gold pour. And uh, just a few weeks after that, what we see is uh, the mine, uh, you know, tracking according to expectations and, and us uh, uh, you know, meeting, meeting, uh, uh, you know, what what we plan for uh, at this stage. So I'll let uh, David expand more on on that. But you know, it's been two years of hard work, capital deployment, and we are finally coming to uh, a phase of harvesting, right? Uh, that's what we expect now with the mine coming into production, going to to harvest mode after. Uh, two years since the transaction. Yeah, and we saw a bit of that today. We actually had some gold Dore bars poured, which was nice to see. And David, obviously, you've been a big part of this. And perhaps what stood out to me uh, as my first mine visit, seeing just how much goes into producing gold, I thought it was pretty impressive also that things really went on time and budget, which was easier said than done when you're building a mine, especially of this size. And 
curious your thoughts on the process and how things have gone along the way. I uh, think it's really been a, an excellent process, and uh, the results we saw today with the with the Gulf War is the fruition of a of a lot of people involved in the process. Uh, some who have been uh, associated with this project even before the Rocks Gold days. Uh, it's, it's just a fabulous feeling to see all that effort to come to fruition. Uh, I think the main story out of this journey though is, is we're not at the end there you know although we built a gold mine and uh, that's now operating and producing gold there's still a lot of exciting things that we we can see happening here uh the exploration potential the potential to potentially go underground uh is huge and uh there's still uh, a lot to keep us excited and busy about the place yeah, you guys are certainly going to have your hands full. And Jorge, one of the things that you said earlier today that helped put things in perspective, where if you have two or three grams of gold per ton, that essentially you're getting two or three out of a million grams is how much gold is coming out there. And, you know, seeing that while we're seeing things go on the conveyor belt, into the grinder, into the mill... Perhaps you could talk about that just so that people realize, get some scope of, you know, seeing how much dirt comes out of the ground and seeing all these different parts of the process, all that work that goes into getting what often is a small amount of gold. You know, uh, Seguela is, uh, ranks as one of the high grade deposits in in west africa is a high grade open pit uh, but to uh to your point to put things into perspective for your audience and 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 uh pers people who are who are new to mining um, a ton of ore a ton is is uh, a million grams and and the gold content is uh, at segel is around 2.6 2.7 uh, grams of gold per ton so it's we we extract 2.7 grams out of a million grams uh, and and you know that's what we mine and what we process and and what we finally uh, once we extract we pour no so um yeah a big effort uh, that's why gold is precious <laughs> yep and speaking of which again i mentioned that we did actually get to see the gold pour in action and of course, my initial thought was that must feel pretty good. You see all of the different steps that go into that. And then you see the gold bars that come out. Although you mentioned later on in the day that as much fun as that is, you're actually more excited about some of the other exploration targets and how there's still a lot of upside potential from the different areas that you found and still have to explore. And uh, perhaps you could touch on that for a moment. Yeah, we, we can always uh, get excited about a uh, gold pour. I think uh, in a way, uh, uh, you know, looking uh, at a, you know, gold is money, right? Yeah. So uh, looking at uh, at a gold pour is, is exciting. And, uh, but what gets uh, me and, and I believe the, the team uh, excited the most is when we look at the exploration opportunities that remain to be tested in this uh, large land package that we hold around Seguela. Uh, we currently have a projection of life of mine of uh, close to 10 years, but that's even without considering our newest discovery, which is uh, Sandbird. Sandbird uh, is the largest resource in the package and is not in our mine plans yet. We will bring it into our mine plants in the second half of the year. Uh, so with that, we can easily think of this mine going well beyond a decade in terms of reserves. And on top of that, we have uh, all of those multiple exploration targets that we discussed early on in, in the session here with the team. Um, and uh, if you ask me what excites me the most, yes, I like to see a gold port like anybody else. But what uh, excites me most is just to see all of that potential and 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 uh and the opportunities that that brings right 
Yes, and certainly uh, will lead to many future gold pours on the way to go. Although in the process of doing this, one of the things that I know is important to you guys, and David, we got to see together the tailing storage facility because taking care of the environment, treating the land, the community in a proper way, obviously, especially in today's mining culture, perhaps more important than ever. And just if you could touch on that and perhaps anything else related to the community, I know in the presentation, you mentioned how there's a lot of local involvement of uh, people from Ivory Coast now as workers and employed here. But I thought that'd be helpful for people to hear the just the steps that you guys are taking to protect the environment as well. Yeah, sure. I mean, uh, touching on a few points there, if you if you look at our interactions with the local communities, uh, we, we believe we have a very good relationship uh, with the local communities. We have three villages in the immediate vicinity of the mine, and then there's the Segala town a little bit more remote, but it's still in our, um, our uh, immediate neighbourhood. So we we've uh, made a lot of effort to uh, to recruit from local communities and provide those uh, provide those opportunities not only ourselves but in our uh, discussions with our mining contractor as a part of uh, letting that contract then uh, commitments to local employment was was key and and we're not talking about you know sort of uh employing people just to sweep a floor or clean an office this is in technical roles in training people as operators uh so really trying to uh bring skills into into those communities as well and those opportunities into the communities and you know there the, are other responsibilities with with making sure that we look after the environment are very important to us as well. As you alluded to, we went out to the tailings dam, and as a company, you know we're uh, moving towards uh, uh, full compliance with the GISDM, which is the global initiative on uh, tailings management. Uh, we have quite an extensive environmental monitoring program and we'll hopefully progress on that as well. If we look at our Yarimoko mine in uh, Burkina Faso, we actually have a conservation area where we've actually reintroduced uh, native species that, that disappeared from that region as well. So so we're looking to bring those sort of initiatives and, and uh, show that, you know, sort of, some people's perceptions about mining being dirty or whatever are, are quite out of date, shall we say. Well, certainly there are places and times where things don't go ideal, but nice to see that the way you guys go about business and put really an emphasis on doing things in a proper way so that can really be a win-win for the company and also the local community. And I know we have a barbecue coming up shortly as we're wrapping up a long day here and Perhaps just before we close out, David, obviously you're going to be heavily involved in a lot of things that are going to be impacting investors going forward. So just in the next couple of years, as you guys continue the exploration, continue to ramp things up, I'm curious what's on your mind, what keeps you up at night that will be the key hurdles that you'll be focusing on so that things continue to progress well? Well, I think the, the the main focus will be obviously uh, seeing the potential out of Segala and harvesting what we uh, what we've uh, developed here. Uh, there's still a big future for Segala, as as Jorge pointed out, with the with the exploration potential. But then within the West Africa region as a whole, you know. Um, we recently announced the the acquisition of the Diamba Sud uh, operation in in Senegal. I think that's a huge tick of confidence for the West African region in general, uh, and I think it's a good decision. You know, we have everywhere we're operating at the moment, we have good uh, cooperation from communities. We've received very good support from government institutions. Uh, so I think what will be uh, keeping me awake is uh, when do I do all this again? Well, I can imagine and a uh, lot to look forward to really 
incredible to see how things have just progressed and you guys have delivered on what you promised, which I know is something, uh, especially in mining, that is important to investors where see things go as planned goes a long way. So I say congratulations to you both. And thank you again for having me on site. It's been great to see what actually goes into putting a mine into action and just really impressive what you guys have done so far. So congratulations on your first gold pour and everything else that's going on. And we'll look forward to being back here soon one day and see how things pick up from there. A pleasure to host you here. Huh? It's been a pleasure to host you. Well, thank you. Thank you, David. Here at Fortuna Seguela Gold Mine. And fortunately, Although it doesn't happen every day, there is a gold pour today and we get to go inside and take a look at that. Hopefully we'll get a few shots, see what that looks like, but it'll be exciting to see some of the gold actually poured. Now we are inside the room where the gold pour actually occurs. It was pretty stunning to see the liquid gold being poured. It's quite hot in there as you might expect, but really beautiful to see the gold coming out representing all of the effort that it takes to produce a gold bar. That's what the gold looks like right after it comes out. You see once that black residue is chipped away, here is a gold Dore bar, which was quite weighty and heavy to hold, but truly beautiful. So now we are up here on the Sunbird deposit, which is a little bit away from the processing plant and where we saw some mining yesterday you can see down there in the distance a pleasure to have you here at, at Seguela and uh, having you enjoy the exploration potential and the amazing view and, and the context with respect to the operation right that's the beauty of Seguela consists of a series of of deposits which are all at trucking distance and that will be uh, eventually put in our mining plan, not a sequence in which they'll be incorporated into production. So here we are on top of the Sunbird location, looking out over the antenna pit where they're actually mining and processing the ore right now. And you can see how much distance there is between these different targets, which obviously can make you wonder how, how do you actually find where the mineralization is located? And a lot of that comes around to the geologists walking around, looking at some of the rock samples, and then deciding where they're going to drill. This is the color of a drill hole, right? This is how we, we explore. This is how we start uh, dimensioning and sizing a resource, right, through, through diamond drilling. And, and most importantly, right, Sunbird is not included in our you know, reserve inventory, right? Uh, you should be seeing that that the resources out of Sunbird incorporated in our reserve inventory towards the end of the year. So we are very, very excited at, at, at Fortuna for what Seguela is becoming for the company. And most importantly, we are touching people's lives. Yep. The impact we have on the economic well-being of surrounding communities is really what makes me very proud of being part of Fortuna and very happy and pleased and honored to have you with us. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Well, thank you. And certainly interesting as we look around. Looks like you have a lot of areas still to explore. We'll keep, be keeping you guys busy for quite quite many years, huh? Viva Fortuna and Viva Seguela. So there is a look inside Fortuna Seguela Mine in West Africa that we've been talking about plenty over the past year on the show. And hopefully that gave you some perspective to see what it's actually like on the ground. Find out more at fortunasilver.com. Congratulations to Fortuna on everything they've done to get that mine up and running on time and on budget in a rather short period of time, which is something that will serve them well for years to come. So thanks for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed the tour and we'll see you again soon.